since we already went over, you know, what woke you up, like with the CSA, especially what you found out as an elder mm -hmm. and, you know, the more research you found out and how they were actually getting rid of records and destroying things and then not writing things down anymore. Well, that woke you up. So I thought maybe, mm -hmm. and I'm going to link that video into the other, um, into the description because I definitely want people to watch what you had to say with the New Zealand and how is that going? I want to let everybody know. Yeah. Oh, you want me to say that now? Yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that, that's going well. Um, I think the the um, JW uh, legal side of it has had tried to put in another, uh, what would you call it, roadblock in there or try and take the New Zealand government to court again. But either way, uh, the the report is into the New Zealand government and once they finish with that, that'll that'll come out regardless wow. of what the witnesses try to do. So this will be, the I think it's the third time they've tried to take the New Zealand government through the court system. It's just crazy. I, I Wow. The only organisation out of all the organisations, religious and non-religious, to do it. But the only one? The, the only, only one. one. Wow. The only one. It's just Jehovah's Witnesses. So well, that says it, a lot. That really does. That really, mm. really does. So you're going to mm. just have to keep me posted, see what happens. Because I know yeah. that they, they have to run out of appeals at some point. Well, I don't, I, I don't know the legal system. So I don't know how many they can continue to file before wow. someone well, says Well, they them. keep on doing it around the world. I mean, there's other countries mm. that are having the yeah. same problem. Yeah. Hopefully they all go the way. Is, did, didn't Spain deregister them or are, are they on their way of deregistering de them? Oh, you know? I, didn't, I know something went in with Spain that they, they've been um, they've been cast as a dangerous sect. Um, oh, that's it. Okay, maybe yeah. that's it because I know Norway deregistered them. Yeah, I think Lithuania deregistered. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just it's happening. Mm. It's literally mm. happening. And hopefully, it snowballs. Anyhow, yeah. everyone's going to go to that video, but right now because it's a great video on CSA as well. You did a lot of, I mean, we talked about a lot of information regarding child sexual abuse within the organization. So I thought this video would be about after you woke up, you, you know, your thought process, what you started noticing, um, some of the things that we talked about before, maybe we, we can just go over them again. So take it away. You're waking up, what's going on? What are you seeing? What are you noticing besides the CSA? Yeah, besides the CSA, it, it's just um, when waking up and, in fact, reading the Bible for what it actually says, instead of picking, you know, cherry picking one little scripture here and one little scripture there to make a teaching. You, <laughs> that had nothing to do with each other, really. Yeah, they the, yeah, the scriptures really. I mean, they might have the same word or mm. something in it, and that's how they tie them together. But yeah, yeah. So the seeing, reading the Bible and scriptures in context, um, you begin to see quite clearly um, how the JW teachings do not uh, match up with what the Bible says. That's not with everything, right. but you can see the the little the little nuances and that that they seem to put into the scriptures to change it to their own meanings or outright change the meaning just because completely change the whole thing right yeah. to back to back their doctrine and their teachings mm -hmm. you were saying something and i thought it was kind of funny it started bugging you about the kingdom ministry yeah our kingdom ministry mm -hmm. yes and that that was um our kingdom ministry, I did think back when it was around, it was something that you had to spend some time on and look at quite deeply and look up the scriptures. And you were actually using some thinking ability in that, even though it was with the right. It was their information, but you yeah. still had to research it. You still had to research it. And then, um, you know, and that was... That was difficult enough working full time with young children um, as well. That was difficult enough. 
and having to do the field service in the three meetings a week right. that we had. Then we still right, had and work. family study. Um, yeah, all of that. Uh, but then the work workbooks came along, and they were, yeah, they were, they were basically milk. Milk. Yes. You, you were drinking milk, and the study was so easy. And in fact, in the end, after we'd had the workbooks for a little while, you could, unless you were doing a talk on the platform, you could just go along to the meetings without preparing and you could answer up because the answers were right there in the paragraphs and there was nothing outside of that that you normally brought in. You just had to answer basically from what was in that workbook. So basically, it, it you became, basically the your answer is what they just read. Yes. And it became just so, so, so easy that you just start reading the Bible and looking for different facets of, of what the what a scripture is actually saying. So I was still a full-on JW, um, still isolating a scripture, but looking at the different facets of it to see mm-hmm. you know, what, what could it mean, what's the principle I can take out of that. Um, so that, that um, I guess, I'm trying not to use the word brainwashing, but, but it basically is. The, is. the way you look at something is it's a it's not con, it's not in context it's always singled out so I could take a scripture single out one scripture and and look at it from different perspectives to get right. something new out of it outside but of the box even, yeah so even even with that it still teaches you a lot to go okay um it could also have this meaning or it could you could apply this part in your life or that part in your life. But really, as time goes by and you do understand, <laughs> in context, you cannot take that meaning out of it. There, there's virtually, I, I shouldn't say not just only one meaning, but generally you can only take one meaning out of it. Have you, you ever noticed, though, that they can take one verse out of something and mm-hmm. they can make it apply to at least 10 different things? Yes. And yeah. they have nothing to do with each other. But somehow mm. that one verse is specifically going towards all these different things. Does that make sense? It does. It does. Yeah. And that's what you can do when you take it out of context. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can infer anything you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what did you, because I, I started noticing things when they um, put the, the watchtower study down to half an hour. And I thought 45 minutes had been shortened because it used to be an hour and now it's a half an hour. And then they, shortened you know got rid of book study and then they shortened the meetings they used to be two solid hours whereas now they're what an hour and a half hour 45 minutes between Mm -hmm. hour 40 hour 45 minutes it's like the meetings were getting shorter and the information was being simplified Mm -hmm. i could never understand the simplified watchtower i was like why do we need a simplified watchtower but they've ended up simplifying everything Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so. yeah. Simplification. I think simplification is good if you're trying to get the same information out there, but at the same time, the simplification meant that we all see the same thing. It was another another path to uniformity, mm-hmm. I, I would say. So that we're all saying the same thing and we're thinking the same thing. And then they're talking about um yeah, well, they don't say uniformity, do they? <laughs> they don't no. use the word uniformity. It's unity. Unity, um, so, unity. Yeah, the, so the words, yeah, you have to use the right words. Use the right words, but it was uniformity because we right. all just went along with with what was there, and and in fact, even the Watchtower study conductors were encouraging answering up what's in the paragraph. Just not, what's in the paragraph, not bringing any outside. No. Wow. Yeah. So that that everything did become dumbed down and just milk, milk without any flavor. It was unflavored milk. Yeah. So, um, and that's exactly what they said they would never do. They want to give mm. us meat, not milk. Yeah, yeah. Meat and juice season. But ma- well, maybe we were going, oh, is, is milk vegetarian? Maybe they were going vegetarian. <laughs> I don't know if it is. I'd have to look that up. <laughs> um, okay, so you notice that the meetings were being very simplified, mm. dumbed down, in other words shortened you watch the csa that now it's going on and well now it's going on with you you had your yeah. problems with cameron 
Yes. That was in the other. Yes. So, okay. Now what's going on with you? The, yeah, it it was still at that time that um, still fully in. And you'll know from my other video that I ended up watching the um, Australian Royal Commission. Okay. And uh, yeah, that, that was, that was quite interesting, but there was, um just going through my head basically what we're learning because there was nothing to learn and like I said starting to read in context so like this scripture doesn't make sense in context of um you know in context of the scriptures what we're learning in a, say a, a meeting workbook or a watchtower doesn't make sense it doesn't quite fit and um I I remember doing a talk, um, one of those 10-minute talks Mm. at at the um, service meeting. And, in fact, at that time... I Are they they called service meetings now? I I cannot even... I've been out for two years. I I can't... Oh, my goodness. I I I forgive it. And I just watched one the other night. I Mm. Anyhow, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. Um, and, And I went to my friend and said, this scripture doesn't make sense in this, you know, for, for this information that they're trying to bring out of the meeting workbook, it doesn't make sense. So yeah, it doesn't work. Um, this was my friend that was the substitute CEO. Um, yeah, so it was all starting to break down. And, and that was that was actually, that was prior to me watching the, the, the um, Australian Royal Commission. So that happened. Um, I had the man come up to the carts and ask me that question that about um, what do I think of the child sexual abuse amongst Jehovah's Witnesses? Mm-hmm. <laughs> of course, I knew nothing because you hear nothing. You hear um, nothing, nothing about it. Um, right. And if there's anything said, it's like, well, it happens everywhere or you can't believe what's written in the newspapers. You can't believe right. what people are saying. You can't believe, right. Because, That's not going to happen in Jehovah's organization. Yes, exactly. Um, and so that that then led me down the path of looking at all the, all those ARC videos and that sort of thing. So we get, get to a point where after I've been reappointed in that congregation, I had a talk at the one of the assemblies during the COVID lockdown here in New Zealand, and they did an assembly where they used brothers. So it was an online assembly rather than rather than uh, recorded talks that we were watching. Right, I, yes. And, yeah, and so I, I, I did one of the talks there. And um, the, the outline that I had, uh, once again, there was something in there that didn't match up with the information we were being given. So the talk was based on parents training your children to know what to say should something come up, as in school, like it might mm-hmm. be nationalism or it might be something right. else. Right, be able to stand up for yourself. To be able to stand up for yourself. And one of the scriptures, and forgive me because I'm forgetting the scriptures, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, one of the scriptures actually says, you know, when you're hauled before for governors and kings, don't worry about what you have to say because the Holy Spirit will give you what you have to say. Yet here we were. So that before that, we had to do a, a demonstration of a, of a mum teaching her child what to say should an incident come up. And, and, and they, they prepare that. And the supporting scripture is, don't worry what you have to say because the no, Holy it will be provided. Will be, right. You don't need to prepare for it. And I, I just, in doing that talk, I just could not bring that scripture out. It was part of the outline. I d- didn't even mention it because you didn't. Did head, anybody notice? Uh, no one said anything afterwards. Uh, the, the it went it went through quite well. I and in fact, I couldn't even put my heart into that talk. It, for me, it must have been one of the worst ones I've done because I wasn't. I couldn't even pretend to be enthusiastic about it. It was, it was just, um, yeah. Scripture didn't fit. You didn't believe it. But I didn't. How, how didn't could you give it. it? How could you give it and say it out loud if you didn't believe it yourself? Yeah, I, I could. I couldn't pretend. I tried to put some. I tried to put some effort into the talk, which I think I did. 
um because no one mentioned it was bad <laughs> but no one mentioned it was good because no way when you do a talk people go oh, yeah that was good <laughs> no that was really yeah yeah you yeah, just so oh. I, I, um but but you know I, I i did that um and that was probably about four months before i disassociated i think it was four four to six months before i disassociated and about a couple of months before i actually stepped down as an elder Okay, keep that thought because I want to ask you a quick, a quick question. Mm. Before, when anybody was supposed to give a part on the circuit assembly, we would have to practice and practice and practice and then give our part in front of the circuit overseer. Do they still do that? Um, yes, all over Zoom. So we, Oh, it's just all over Zoom now? All over Zoom, yeah, because we were still in lockdown. And um, so I did practice. I practiced with the... Um, over Zoom with the mum and her daughter to make sure the demonstration went right. I practiced the talk uh, myself. But when, it, when it's with the circuit overseer, it, when, you, when, you, when you do a, a run-through, uh, or generally, this is my experience, I don't know. Right, and, and that's what I'm curious. Yeah, in, in, in New Zealand anyway, and I'm sure it's very similar across the world, if you're doing a part that's got a demonstration, you have a quick... Um, lead into the demonstration, so it's only a, a small amount of words, maybe half a minute or so, and then the dem as you're introducing the the people who are going to do the demonstration, or let's look in on a demonstration, and then once that's finished, then sometimes you can say a little bit at the end, or it'll just end, and that's what the circuit overseer is looking at. You, so there, he, there, you don't have to. So the people that are doing the demonstration, because I never gave a talk. But mm. every time I had to, you know, give a, a part or an answer or a demonstration or something like that, we had to practice in front of the circuit officer. Yes. Um, yeah, th this was only once we had to do that. Okay. So, and, and that's the way it's always been as far as I recall for any talk I've ever done at an assembly or convention. Okay. One, one little bit of practice. You don't do the whole talk otherwise you can imagine how long it would take for all the brothers they used to though ed oh, we they? used okay. yes that's what i'm saying we used to everybody would give their whole talk and so you would go there and basically everybody was giving their talks everybody was giving parts of their part i remember being there for like three or four hours at some um part because of some of my parts because you had to practice in front of the circuit and circuit and the district overseer yeah because we had district overseers too so anyhow, okay, I'm sorry, didn't mean to get that far off of the subject. Oh, that's okay. Anyhow, okay, so now what's going on? Um, so that that was still at the stage where um, still thinking about it, but my my, if I think about it, my demeanor was um, I, I wasn't happy at the meetings anymore. I used to love mm -hmm. going to the meetings. Well, it was mostly Zoom anyway. We hadn't gone back to the in-person meetings at that time, but I wasn't as talkative. I wasn't as cheery. Always kept the camera off, and um, yeah, my even as of, an elder, even as an elder, wow. um, my my demeanor. Um, I guess if anyone would have looked at me, they would think that possibly something's wrong. But that was only for the meetings, um, that sort of thing. For my work that I had to do, always good, always happy. You're fine. Or right, fine, fine. It was just just the meetings, and I guess part of that too um, would have been the fact that my wife, obviously being a witness, and my children being witnesses. There's a possible, I guess, something that everyone goes through. What if, what if they don't accept the fact that I'm, I don't want to do right. this, and right. of course. My wife noticed differences. Oh, I'm sure um, you were depressed. I'm um, sure you were depressed. Yeah, I, I, I don't know because I've never, when I've read about depression or seen pe know people who are depressed, I normally don't get depressed. I might get, so this is maybe me playing with meanings, but so I, I might get down, but I can eat some food. And normally it's physiological for me. There's something physiological and then I'm fine. Um, mm. I could eat some food or have a good sleep or. Um, did you find you had to do that after yeah. the meetings? And I'm before fine, or yeah. did you did you feel you had to do that before or after the meetings? Did no, your nerves I, start? You were okay. 
No, I was fine after the meetings mm. were finished. <laughs> I was good. But um, I, one of the things is, I guess, being being an elder in the congregation especially, um, you do have to be seen, unfortunately, which, which right. would be the fact that even if I've got my camera off. Um, you're you're still there. Now, yeah, I'm still there. So we, because we had left a um, language group for the sake of our children, they, one of my boys remained in the English. We went to Hindi speaking um, group as part of the congregation for a while. And um, so we'd come out of that. And here I was now in the meetings, back in the English meetings, and I wasn't answering up. So a lot of the ones in the English didn't know that we'd come out of the Hindi group, <laughs> that oh. we'd finished it. Um, and in fact, one of the one of the sisters whose husband was one of the um, non-reported uh, alleged pedophiles that were on record. Um, oh, in, in your hall. In your, con- in your kingdom, yeah. yeah. She, she goes, oh, um, are you guys back in the English again? You know, it, it was a, it was one of those jabs, if you know what. Any jab underhanded. It was an underhanded, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because we... The, underhanded the, snarky remark. remark. It was, yeah. Yeah, and I, I was thinking to myself, you know, how, how can someone like you say something like that you know full well what your husband did or what he was trying to do to your daughter and um and and she was one who would always talk about that her family's doing so well and her and her children are pioneering um they're i think they're in their 70s something like that mid 60s early 70s um yeah and she would always and her husband was the pedophile her husband yeah Alleged. Yeah. It's a, it's alleged. The record. <laughs> alleged. Alleged. Right. Yeah. In the envelope in the file cabinet. In the yeah. Right. Yeah. I read th- read through the notes and the family had never reported it to the police at all. There was no record. So it, it never was handled. Never was handled. So yeah. um and that's one of the ones I think when we when the branch rung us up to say what records we had, there was um his name wasn't on the records. And I guess because all it was was information writ- looked at, written by the wife on um, a number of A4 pages, and they were in the envelope. So I got to read all of those. That was that was shocking enough. And um, just a bit of a side story. Strangely enough, there's another uh, brother, and we'll do brother in quotes. Right. Uh, I'll call him a, a Pimo, who knew the story. He'd known it from when he was a young lad, and he's my age now. So this had happened a number of years ago, and he he knew where he rang me up one time because he'd seen me on um, on that interview that I did with you. Uh, right. Years. Oh, oh! I thought he saw you on the news. No, you were no. all over the news. And um, one of the other ex brothers who who's who appears to be leading the charge in New Zealand, who's actually been on television and he's got a Facebook page, um, put him in touch with me, this other brother in touch with me. And he, he was asking, he was asking me at the time, so who are these um, brothers that you know of that are pedophiles or alleged pedophiles? And even then, I was struggling to say who they were. Say their because names. to me, it was still confidential. Um, that's that's the elder talking, you know. That's even, the elder talking. Did, oh, absolutely. Yeah, even though I'd left the organisation by that time, and I've, I've I've given this material to you. Do not share another's private matters. Yes, that's right. And, and so I found it very hard to actually get some names out. But he actually brought that name up himself, and he told me about it. And I said, "Oh, okay. So you know about that one." So he knew about it. He knew about it, and he said, "Yeah, he he knew the daughter that all of this happened to." So it was, um, yeah, and, you know, here was me and my naivety whilst I was in, thinking that it had all been handled properly by hours. But, yeah. He, 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 he confirmed that it had never been taken care of. Nothing happened. Yeah, as far as he knew, nothing had happened. And, yeah. um, and in fact, I think that the daughter still, I, I can't recall whether she's actually talking to her. He, he would be the stepdad. Uh, whether whether 
she's talking to the stepdad now after all these years have gone by or whether she isn't, I don't, I don't know. But I remember something like that coming up in a conversation somewhere. So uh, it was, um, yeah. It, it makes you kind of sick. It's just because that's, you know that that, it's that all these other stories are actually true. Yeah. They're, they aren't just made up by the media or people trying to get back at the organization. These are hurt people they that are. have been sincerely, I mean, not sincerely, but severely hurt by the organization's Yes. Um, yeah. The way they handle abuse. Mm. And I, mm. you know, that, that was so, um, for in the congregation I was in, two convicted, two alleged, and um, another elder let slip. He didn't say it to me. He said it to my wife out on our deck in our yard. And I was in my office doing my work and I heard him. And he said when he was serving in a congregation, it's about 20 kilometers away from the congregation I was in, he said when he was serving, there were two pedophiles in his congregation. And I was thinking, that's crazy. And it wasn't the ones that were now in the congregation I was in because um, you get to see their records of where they came from. And none of them came from his congregation. So between two congregations, that's wow. six. That's six. And I, 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 I did, did some quick maths and I gave the benefit of the doubt that that's two congregations, that's six. So that's on average three per congregation. So I thought, okay, I'll drop it down to two per congregation. Two per congregation. And I think, I don't, I, I can't recall the exact number anymore, but there's 100 and maybe 170 congregations in New Zealand. Um, mm -hmm. I'd have to double check that on the New Zealand charity site. But two times 170 as an average and I'm not a, a a statistician or anything but you know let's say you've got three I won't even say 340 let's drop it down to 300 even if you drop it down to 200 that's a lot of it's just too many it's too many too many too many, too many. yeah yeah and I heard yeah. this, uh, something the other day about um Jehovah's Witnesses that uh what was it that the pedophilia in the Catholic Church got narrowed down to 4% of the clergy. I can't remember where. It might have been another XJW channel, and I just mm -hmm. happened to be listening. But 4% um, of the clergy were involved in pedophilia. That's what it got narrowed down to. Whereas with the JWs, it's basically across all the congregations, elders, servants, publishers. It, when, I mean, when you start breaking it down like that and you mm, compare it mm. to the Catholic Church, because I remember as witnesses, we were just condemning the Catholic Church and yes. their problems with pedophilia. And we, I mean, it was in the magazines and we just felt emboldened to, you know, just say that, well, they don't do that anymore. And there's a reason because yeah. they're worse than the Catholic Church. Yeah, they are. And, and I've, I've actually brought that out to my <laughs> my friend, which was quite funny, the ex-circuit overseer. I just blurted these things out, you know, because I was I was being truthful and honest. Um, this was before I stepped down, before I even disassociated. Oh, wow. Okay. And I You're really like stepping that. in it. Yeah. So, um, it, I mean, how can you not speak up or say anything? Even though I still believed it was, it was, was I teetering on it's not right? But it's one of those things. You know, we're always told, leave it in Jehovah's hands. He'll sort right. it out. Yes. Uh, but after a while, it becomes, well, he hasn't sorted out child abuse, but he's blessing Kingdom Hall projects and video projects. And, you know, what does he really care about? And Why would he care about a video <laughs> complex like they're building in Ramapo over the how many thousands of children? Mm. Mm. Or even or even more when you include the adults because, because they were abused as children and they're still mm. dealing with it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. And so that that that's one of the things which which got to me as well when I was talking to the brothers when I went to um step down as an elder, was that in all in all this time, why haven't the children's prayers being listened to. And, you know, one of, one of the things the elders have to do is um, in supporting them is basically praying with them and, and helping them to 
lean on Jehovah. Um, but that doesn't work. You can't, I said to these brothers, you can't pray this this away. You can't pray it away being um, abused like that. So you're not providing any support other than pray to Jehovah and maybe read a few scriptures. What That's did they not say? Anything away. What um, did they say? Not much. There was nothing. There's nothing really to say. I mean, what can you say? Uh, they, they, you'd fully know that praying doesn't take anything away. And I was to that point because I, I then started thinking back about prayer. And there's a lot of prayers that 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 I I put forth, which I thought were uh, how would you put it um, in line with God's will. And yet, in the end, when I thought about them all, I was the one having to put forth effort to do something. And then I was thinking to myself, well, what's the difference between that and me wanting to do better, say, with my my career that supports my family? I had to put forth effort to be a better person at that particular job. I had to put forth effort to get qualifications um, without prayer. So, <laughs> so I put forth the effort and got the rewards uh, the same thing when I was a JW, say a prayer, but I put forth the effort to get right. This so you are, you're the one, right? You're the one that put yeah. forth the effort to get it. Yeah, exactly. And so, right. uh, you know, how do you? Um, yeah, in, in your head, how do you go? Well, prayer works, but then you go, okay, well, I didn't pray about this, and that works. And right. It, yeah, I guess. I guess. Or that, or what about know, all these? You know, I. I what about all of these different people who pray, Jehovah, please help me pay the bills. Jehovah, yeah. please help me provide food for my children. Jehovah, please mm -hmm. help me provide clothing for my children. Jehovah, yeah. please help my sick one. Jehovah, please help my, you know, I can, we can go on and on and on and on. Yes, yes. But it, that never, the help doesn't come, you know? No. So what are they supposed, are they just, do they not have enough faith? I mean, yes. it's just, it, it, it's the way the organization makes them feel guilty because if they like, but you know, Jehovah's not helping me right now. You're, you're not praying enough. Yeah. But he doesn't, you know, Jehovah doesn't answer prayers right now. <laughs> I mean, just, I mean mm. there's there's a lot of suffering out there. So Yeah, yeah. So even, even with that, yes, uh, people might say he's answering their prayers. Well, he's not answering the prayers of the children being abused. Being abused, right. And, and to me, that's more important than, than anything else. I mean, but even still, it's people... If you're saying he's answering the prayers, it's people giving you the clothing, it's people giving you the food, it's people helping mm -hmm. you out. Yeah, there, there is, for me, there is no God involved in that, unfortunately. It's the people, right, you're right. It's the people. Mm. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to go through our notes, because you mentioned some really good things. After you woke up, you, you started talking to me about morals. Mm, yes, morals. So after being in what I thought was the religion blessed by God, or the only true religion, um, and being an elder as well, and um, being told what good morals there are, you know, what you know, what are morals, you know, the, the adultery and all the way through, even smoking's bad and all, all right. that sort of thing, um, which comes from a magazine. Um, and then having to deal with the fact that if you're supposed to have all these morals and God is moral, why do we have such a problem with um, child abuse in this organisation? And um, also in reading the Bible, uh, <laughs> just reading the Bible, because I, I really don't think as JWs, and this is a generalization, because I know there will be others who really read it for what it says, but right. still want to remain right. JW. Right. Once you read it for what it says, and you don't think about a God, that there is a God, just read it like you'd read a normal storybook, and just read, just read it, everything that's in there. And I'm seeing this, this God who this God that is slow to anger, which he was the one that proceeded to say to, Mo to Moses, you know, God slow to anger, um, and a God who's not jealous, and all these things, a God of love. And mm -hmm. then you see, see in these other stories, he's jealous. 
and then he's vindictive and he'll yeah very very vindictive and those were the the, the examples of the ark being taken by the Canaanites um, and they were afflicted with all sorts of maladies and and the ink piles and <laughs> so they 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 got rid of the ark brought it back into um, the land of Israel and those Israelites in that area at the time when it came back they were happy they were joyful right that, because the ark had come back into um, Israel and um, I think it was Beth Shemesh and they and they were they were um, happy and they were sacrificing to Jehovah well Jehovah wasn't happy or should I say Yahweh, Jehovah, whatever anyone wants right. to translate the tetragrammaton to. Um, because they looked at the ark. They looked upon the ark. And even though they were happy and sacrificing to him, he goes and wipes out 50,000 of them in an instant. It's just like you look We're looking at the ark. And you're gone. And yet, <laughs> you know, I don't know how many, how many um, uh, Philistines actually lived from taking the ark. So they got piles and they got all these other pestilences come on them. I don't know how many of them. They, they obviously lived long enough to bring the ark back into Israel, but but um, the God of Israel couldn't have his own people look upon the ark. He just had, rather than wipe out who was there, he wiped out 50,000 people. And that, right. that, that was an eye-opener. And, and then the other one where, um, well, they, these are just two of the many stories that are in there. Where, where this God that's slow to anger just goes, I'm going to wipe them out. In fact, that's what he wanted to do um, when the Israelites came out of Egypt. He wanted to just wipe them out because they weren't. Or what about the the angel that killed 185,000 men in one night? Yeah, that that was that that one was bad. Um, and and also the the other one. Here's the other one. Uh, now is it in Psalms? It actually says about is it Psalms or Isaiah or one of them? Um, I'm sure if you do a search on the internet, you'll be able to find it. Where where the um, Yahweh actually says, "I create good and I create evil," and you say, "Read that scripture," and then you read these other things like um, the second account of David numbering the people, and one of them it says Satan. Um, I think Satan um, got David to number them, and the second one it was Yahweh was angry, and so he. Um, basically put it into the mind of David to go and number the people. It actually says that that Yahweh um, got David to number them. So David goes and numbers them. Um, Yahweh gets angry. Instead of wiping out David, he wipes out 70,000 Israelites. And it was, um, you know, I thought to myself, that and the times with David and Bathsheba, David and Bathsheba did something wrong. So what did Yahweh do? He had the child put to death. You know, he he made the child sick, and, and that never made sense to me. Died. That never made sense to me why the that, baby had yeah. to die. Yeah, that that was that was quite sick in itself. And then he lets all this other stuff go on, like um, um, a half brother raping his half sister, and you know, in in David's family, that's right. allowed to happen. But the baby couldn't live; it was innocent. Um, right. Uh, all these things that happened, whether it be even going back to the Israelites coming out of Egypt and Aaron um, Aaron being the one who made the calf. They'd just come out of Egypt. They were waiting for Moses to come down from the mountain. They didn't know what to do. They never knew a God named Jehovah. They, he hadn't made himself. He hadn't, right. He had not. They didn't know how to worship. They didn't know what to do. So they did something to think that they were worshiping a God and God got angry with them. And and so after Moses being given the command on the mountain, thou shalt not kill, he comes down, smashes the tablets, and kill everyone his his brother and his father, and yeah, and it, it sort of becomes a okay. You've given this law, thou shalt not kill. That happens, and then you're telling your your people to kill the bad ones of their people or the ones who aren't following the law, or you're going to genocide all these different races. And right. um, it's hard to actually say, how does that fit? Thou shalt not kill. And I've heard a, an explanation or an apologist say, well, it means they shouldn't kill their own people. Yeah, but they did kill their own people. So um, what does that really mean? You know, there's the ones where where they genocide people and or, or they brought back um, the, the, the women and children and um, and they were told, to slaughter 
all of them, except for the girls that hadn't slept with a man or the virgins, and then the virgins were portioned amongst the soldiers and the Levites, and even even Yahweh had his own portion of them dedicated to him. So I think some actually mean it means that you know the animals and and that were given to Jehovah were always sacrificed, but he also had some of the virgins given to him. So the animals right. and virgins to him. So whether they were sacrificed or not. I don't know, but it implies that we're still there's... people, right? There's, yeah. yeah, yeah. There's something. They're not to... animals. Yeah, when something's um, like given to Jehovah in terms of animals, and that it's always sacrificed, and so so were these virgins. What were they going to do? The Levites already had their share. So what's going to happen to these ones that are meant to be um, for Jehovah? So you have to read through those stories and go, yeah. And so that's that made me think about as, as witnesses, we don't. We no, didn't. We I mean, we didn't. No. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't look at it from those perspectives. No. We didn't no. really study those particular aspects of the no. of w- what happened. Yeah, because we're conditioned to believe that that he is a, a god of love and justice. And, yeah. And well, that that's how, that's how we were always taught, though. That's how he. Yeah. That's how all of that was explained because he is a god of justice. Yeah. And wisdom, and he knows mm. what is best. Because I could mm. never understand the slaughtering of everybody either. No. I mean, what, what, what did the innocent have to do with anything? Exactly. And his ways are higher than ours. So um, that sort of doesn't, if, if I can have more compassion for people than he does, <laughs> then how can his ways be higher than mine? That, and, yeah. you know, someone would say that's human thinking, but. So did that make you start questioning the Bible? Um, it did. It did. All, all of all of this adds up to, you know, from coming out of an organization that said God basically talks to them and uh, yes, even though they're not inspired, um, God. <laughs> yeah, they're not perfect. They're not inspired. They're not spirit directed and they make mistakes. But God mm. speaks to them and follow them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So th- that's what makes you question it is that y- you have all of this going on and then then. Like I said, once you take the blinkers off and you start reading the stories, and one of the best ways that I heard, I actually started listening listening to once I was, once I, oh, I think between when I stepped down as an elder and and two months later when I disassociated, um, I started listening to a um, really good, there's lots of good um, scholars out there, lots of really good scholars, but the first one I'd heard that I recall was that Bart Ehrman, and um, he was he he was talking about reading, um, uh, and I'm I'm probably going to butcher this, but what you do is you you take these same stories in the Bible, let's say the Gospels, <clears throat> and you and you put them side by side, <clears throat> and you read them side by side, and you will see very quickly all the um, contradictions and. Um, things that just aren't right and that don't match up, that you can't match up. Some things you can make apologetics for, other things you just can't. So you put those stories side by side and they're different. And so I did that and I read certain accounts of Jesus' life side by side. And in fact, the easiest one actually is the um, the genealogy. Is it genealogy or genealogy? I've heard both words. Genealogy, um, I, whatever, wherever genealogy. you're at. Genealogy, genealogy, I don't know. Yeah, uh, of Jesus. <laughs> in the in the in the Bible there, and it's just different. And um, um, and some try to say, well, that's the the genealogy of Mary, but it's not because it says um, son of Joseph. It doesn't say son of Mary. It says Joseph. So it was Joseph's genealogy in both cases, but they were different. And you can't even match up the the names that are different as being oh maybe that was a name that that this person was called by, but it just doesn't match up. And that's a really simple one. Um, but, you know, just the stories. And and when you come to understand that the different books of the Bible, um, basically Paul's writings came before the Gospels. That's what they've discovered. So the Gospels were written after and more around the time, I think, when the, when the temple or after the temple was destroyed. Um, so Paul had the earlier writings. <laughs> and so you really did do some deep dive didn't you yeah i do uh, oh once you once you start going into it it's you know the, these people are skilled this is this is religious people 
who have gone in as well, you know, to do these um, seminary schools. And some of them will come out and go, I can't believe this anymore. And others will still believe it, even though they they understand um, certain aspects of it, you know, the contradictions, the... Um, so they're the actually taught that. Archaeology. They're actually taught the contradictions. They're yeah, actually yeah. taught... Well, they, they learn it as they're going through. So... Um, but I don't, I don't know. I've never been to seminary school, but they, they come yeah. to understand the same sorts of things um, and some will remain and some won't. So I've listened to both and um, it's just quite good listening to that. And it does help you to um, go, OK, this appears to be a book written by a man, because if it was written by a God, he can't communicate very well. He can't get his story straight. And he's a, and he's a God that he's contradicting everything he says he is when he says he's slow to anger well he's fast to anger um and i think that brought up one time the um slow to anger and um you bring up the the creation days you go to genesis um and and everything was done in six days and you've got young earth creationists that say yep that's six literal days the earth was created the heavens were created everything was created six literal days um, and then you've got others that go, well, a day is a thousand years. Um, so it, each day was a thousand years. And I think the witnesses may have subscribed to that at one stage. They did. But if, if, they if did for the, because for 75, years, they, they um, had to do it for 75. Yeah. The, the seven 1,000 days ah, of each yes. creation. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. But yeah. So if, if a day is, is a thousand years, then within two days, he just wiped out the whole earth. So that doesn't tell me that it's a God that's slow to anger if a thousand days, a, a thousand years is, is a day. So, you know, and then it's sort of like, uh, where do you apply that a day is a thousand years? You just make it up as you go along. And um, so once you once you read through the Bible and you see the contradictions and you see the, especially the contradictions with God, I think is, is more the thing. What he says to you in one one mouthful or what he commands and then what he actually does or commands people to do is actually very uh, a very nasty i'll call him narcissistic in psychopath you can call him any negative yeah. name you like and when you read the bible for what it is without putting god in a he's so good he's so great um he's higher than us he's he's the worst person ever um and to me worse than hitler um so so do you so I understand that you don't believe in the Bible. So do you believe, and I, and we, when we were talking about this last mm. time, we were, we were talking, you were talking about like those who um, uh, are Islam and yeah. you've got, you know, there's all these different types of religions that have a completely different God. Mm. So have you become, do you still believe in a higher power or have you become more towards agnostic atheist yes the, the have you? okay atheist. atheist so I, okay. i'm still i'd still be open to it but based on based on the bible and based on everything that any religious um i call it religious theory <laughs> religious group religious organization all the problems that it causes i don't believe that there is a god we we have so much um if there is a God and you've got ones like the witnesses going, well, he's just just trying to show up all these forms of human government don't work and his way is the best. Well, all the forms of human government have been long done. What What's to come next? We've, <laughs> everything was done pretty quickly. We've had the dictators. We've Everything's had the, been the, proven. The so what's, what's the, what's the yeah. wait? What's the wait? And, um, you know, in the meantime, We've been, even though the sins of the fathers should not come upon the sons, from Adam and Eve, if if you believe that story, all the sins have come upon the sons and the daughters, and it's all been passed down. And yet he says, um, the sins of the fathers shall not come upon the sons. But actually, in the Bible, he also says the sins of the fathers will come upon the come sons. On the sons. So right. He's contradicted himself. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, that, that's my that's my whole thing. There's so much suffering, um, not just amongst humans, but amongst the animals as well. So much. So what the animals have to do with so what so called sinful humans have done? Why are the animals suffering? Um, isn't God going to look after them? And you know, there's the the old school. I think 
I don't know whether it's Christianity as a whole or any other religions go well. Animals don't have feelings, and they they right. it's different for them. And it's yeah. And, and anyone who's had a pet, just a pet, knows that animals have feelings. They have feelings. You, know, you can they upset do. your pets. You you can if you get angry with them. Um, and, it hurts and, them. They yell. It does. It does. It does. Them. It hurts it's them. They don't them want to. Eat. They don't want you to be mad. Yeah, that's right. And so. Animals have feelings, and you you see it when if you ever watch videos of um, uh, say animals going to the slaughter um, to a slaughterhouse. They're scared. They're scared, and um, yeah, you can see them. they visit, you know, they're shaking. Their 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 voice is different. Uh, yeah, to use the word voice, but all these animals are suffering. And then you think about God wanted all these thousands of animal sacrifices, <laughs> and it's you know why. What was why the purpose this, behind it? Yeah, why, why did why, they have to and, suffer? Yeah, and why does an all loving God need to be sacrificed to? Why do you have to take animals and just slaughter them and burn them and for him so that he can smell an aroma? If he's a God, why does the smell of burning animals and fat make him feel good? Um, right. that's almost a human thing to, to smell something and feel good, <laughs> like a perfume or, or a barbecue going on, you feel. You feel right. good. You would think that a higher being wouldn't. What does he get out of it? Just, yeah. We would, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's what, not a human. So. One thing I really appreciate because of this conversation mm. is because I still believe in God. I, I, yeah. I just, I, you know, I, and I told you that I just in with my head, I just, I, I, there, there has to be a higher power behind everything. You know, there just has to be a higher power. But that's just my belief. But what's nice, and this is what I hope people watching this will see is you can have a civil conversation and not mm. necessarily agree with everything. Mm. I agree with a lot of what you're saying about the Bible. I have to admit, I really do, mm. but that's okay that we're, you know, that we might have a difference of opinion. It doesn't mm. mean that we have to argue. And I'm finding that so many that come out of the, you know, the XJW community still have that you have to think the way I think mentality mm, mm. does that am I making sense you are making perfect sense and, and that to me goes back to the whole um talking about morals but morals and beliefs when, when you're reevaluating all of that it's sort of like um and I'll use the example of religions you look at um you come out of religion and um you look at all these other religions and it just causes so much division and problems, and they each try and put their own spin on the belief. They well, they not only that, the the, you can you're, the only way for salvation or for your everlasting life is if you believe the way they believe. Because they if believe, you don't believe yeah. the way they believe, it's, it, they're no yeah. different than Jehovah's Witnesses. All religion yeah. is the yeah. same. If yeah. you don't believe the way I believe, you're not going to make it. Yes, that's right, and so. When you look at all of that, it's sort of like, well, anyone can put their spin on anything. And you see it everywhere. Um, the, 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 someone puts their spin on it. Another one puts another spin on it. And so you you become sort of, we've all got our own opinions. And That's all it is. That's honestly. It's okay that, to have your own opinion. And I, it's okay to have differing opinions. I have to agree with you 100% there. I mm. personally, myself. I will never be a part of another organized religion. I don't mm. need other men telling me how to believe and how to think about what I'm reading. And that's all mm. I'm doing. I'm going to be reading the Bible. I should be able to be able to understand it for myself or mm. come to certain understandings myself or yes. maybe not believe certain things because it is a book made, written by man over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Mm. So how many times could men have put in their own opinion Yes, and nobody would have ever known? That's right. So, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's that's just my personal thing. Yeah. And it is, it's, yeah, everyone's free to to believe what they want. And for me, absolutely, I really don't care. I, 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 I when I reevaluated, it was, um, well, really, uh, you know, LGBTQ plus or whatever, whatever it's called now. I don't care. They're, they're doing what they're doing as long as you're not hurting another person. Um, someone else on, on another side of it, as long as you're not hurting another person. But what I see with um, organizations like JWs, um, they hurt people. Mm -hmm. They hurt 
families, they, they cause motherly love to somehow disappear. So how does a mother not have love for her children? How can a mother who's got a disfellowship child go, I'm not talking to you anymore. I don't want anything to do with you anymore. That is something's wrong in your head when you can cause a mother do, be able to do that. Against the scriptures, which is going, you know, he, God said, you know, that about, about a mum, you know, he, he would be, yeah, uh, I can't even bring the words out properly, but, but you're breaking this maternal the natural but that natural mm -hmm. instinct that natural maternal yeah. instinct i just yeah. um in fact it's i'm going it's going to be posting tomorrow mm -hmm. i just did an interview with a gal and i mean her poor life but it, it came to her last child what just really did it for her was she had no, maybe she had three i can't remember hers three or four but she um had like two other kids and one of them had autism and she asked her mom, she, she was disassociated. She wasn't even disfellowshipped. She was disassociated. And she, she asked her mom, can you please come and help me? Please come and help me. You know, my husband has to work. I need help with the babies. And, you know, I, I can't have this baby by myself and do all of this. Well, they made plans for about two weeks. Her mom said, okay, okay. You know, I know she said, my husband won't be here because he was disfellowshipped. My husband won't be here. He'll go away. But mom, I need you. Well, when the article came out, I think it was in 2018, 2019, mm -hmm. about how we're supposed to treat our um, disassociated or disfellowship family members yeah. outside of the home. And her mom called her and she said, we just had the study article. And because of what I just learned, I don't feel that I'm going to be able to go and help you. So she didn't help her. She had to deliver the baby by herself because all her husband can do is drop her off at the front door. It was a very, mm -hmm. it's a very sad, sad, but yes, I mean, that. I, long story short, yes, she's, you're right, mothers lose that natural maternal instinct that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's right. So mothers, fathers, sons, daughters will, will lose that for their, their own parents, their own children, just their families. It's just absolutely crazy. So if it's a religion built on love, I would say it's love of men who are leading them, love of their leaders. Um, that's who they love because they can't love a, um, yeah, the, the good, well, actually having said that, God of love, you've got to reevaluate that when you read the Bible. <laughs> he's the God of, of love. When he's feeling in a good mood, he's a God of love. When he's in a bad mood, he'll just wipe you out. Or smite just, you. He'll do something. Smite you. He'll smite you. Yeah. yeah. you got to be Bibles. He'll smite. Mm, mm. So, yeah, what do you say? But I, I have nothing against anyone who wants to believe. I'm, I'm happy to have chats with them. And I do that with people at work. Uh, I'll bring things up. Um, yeah, what, what this whole experience has taught me as well is not just to accept everyone for who they are unless they're hurting other people, um, but also to speak up um, about, you know, something religious if something saying saying someone's stupid i mean no someone's saying something stupid in my head um I, i'll come back with something or i'll or i'll bring up bring up something like you know if, if we're in a meeting and it seems like people are just following what one person's saying i'll try and bring up something about being in a cult <laughs> it's, it's a bit <laughs> crazy because it's sort of like this group thing it's it a group thing it's a group thing Yes, groupthink, um, which can be good. Groupthink can be good. It can be good and bad. All, all these logical fallacies that you learn about once you come out. But I, I try to point out certain things and go, because they know that I was a JW. So I just make it plain now that, that oh, that's a bit, you know, that's a bit culty doing it this way. <laughs> what are they saying? That? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit culty. And, uh, yeah, and then I've got actually got some... Um, I guess authority behind that because I was in like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, and I was misled. By I've them. lived one. I've had right that experience. Mm, mm. Yeah. So like you, I'll never join another organization um or religious organization if I ever become religious again. Um but yeah, everyone feel free to to be themselves and not let, hurt other people. Let me ask you a question um mm. bef before we end this. If you were able to give any advice to everybody that's waking up right now and mm -hmm. you know you, you know what it's like that the emotional mess it does with your head 
you know, deconstructing and unlearning everything and then learning a whole bunch of things that mm. what's your advice for them? Oh, yeah. Um, I would say if you, when you're waking up, if you haven't already, take the blinkers off and read the Bible for what it says. Don't read anything into it but what it actually says so you can make your um so that you can decision. do an evaluation of God or the Bible because I do think if there is a God then he's been misrepresented in the Bible because mm -hmm. he's certainly not a God of love in the Bible and he's not a God slow to anger and he's not a God that's not he's just very he's horrible he's a horrible guy don't know why I said guy <laughs> yes, <you did. laughs> um well it's a patriarchal book um it is it's, very patriarchal. It, it's you think of him as a male. I, everybody I does. Yeah, yeah, everybody and, does. And all those laws against that that make women second citizens. But anyway, so I uh, got sidetracked there. <laughs> and also, I didn't need any help. Um, I wasn't raised as a JW. But I think, uh, particularly if you're raised as a JW and you're feeling it's feeling traumatic, then I would say you actually need to talk to someone professional. Talk to someone professional and get this out of your system. I like just been made aware, um, just yesterday or the day before, that one of our friends, whose whole family basically isn't a witness anymore. We didn't know that till after oh. um, um, I did my articles for Radio New Zealand. Um, the daughter read it. She'd been disfellowshipped back. Uh, must have been twenty years ago. Um, wow. The daughter still is having problems. She's gotten on with her life. She's got a partner, um, but she's still having problems and getting triggered over the, the, her whole disfellowshipping. And I'm thinking that was like 15, 20 years ago. Um, yeah. yeah. So I'd say it's an impact. It's an impact on the rest of is. our lives. Yeah. It's but she impact. was raised as a JW, you see. I wasn't. I, I knew. But it still impacted your life. It still impacted your life. Impacted your life. Definitely for everyone else. It, you need to find a support group. You need some actual professional therapy, professional help. And I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if that, that's a big cat. I don't know <laughs> if that's free um, in your country. I think we can get it's a little not, bit. Free it's in not. In fact, it's, in that, it, you know. I, I'm so glad you brought that up because especially in the States, it's one thing that I'm actually fighting against. Mm. I've got, um, anyhow, the, the medical field in the United States it has it hasn't even really they don't even accept religious trauma in their um psychiatric book yet mm. so it's not even something that is an accepted mental health problem yeah. and it really is i mean it's a tr I mean, it's just like any other thing that you go through that causes you trauma it needs to be studied and there more people need to be helped and there's just not enough therapists or doctors or anything, and I I know this personally, mm. that um, know enough and have enough understanding to be able to help. Because, mm. you know, when you're in that vulnerable situation and you are surrounded by people that don't understand what you're going through, yeah, mm. it's, it's, I'm glad you guys have it in other countries and I'm glad you have it there in New Zealand. Yeah, it's not, it's not always free. I think you can go to your doctors and you can get a few free appointments. But if if you re you'll know I I mean you'll know whether you're really really needed. But you definitely need to find someone who can support you and someone who understands. And generally, that's ex Jehovah's Witnesses who understand what you're going through. Because great uh, advice, great advice. Mm, and just find those groups. I think you're more fortunate in your country that there's a lot more people that are out. New Zealand is only the, the total population of New Zealand as I think we've we've hit five million. Maybe we're getting to near six, but that's like a small city in your country. Right. So um, that's how the problem is, is either there might be more of us over here, but we don't know each other uh -huh. because there's no way that we can really connect because yeah. how can you reach? You have to be anonymous. Everybody has to be mm. anonymous and they have to. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. difficult. So I think we have 14,000 JWs in New Zealand. So you spread that out over the, the size of our country. And it's pretty hard to to find people that are with you. And to me, part of the trauma is still believing 
and and this is anecdotal on my part. I've got no evidence for it for anything. Part of the problem, and maybe a big part of the problem, is still believing that the Bible is true and that represents the true God, because then you're you've got all these um, you, you're so invested in it that it's real and that you're um, you're going against God or something that. To me, it still locks the trauma and trauma in there. So once you read it for what it is and go, oh, this isn't representing what a God should be, a benevolent God, an omnipotent God. It's talking about some uh, human with mental problems, really bad mental problems, worse than Hitler. And, and once you can break that down and go, okay, either there is no God or, or it's not the God of the Bible then actually start recovering from my perspective um and and um that's just part of it like i said i don't have the the other trauma of it where i have lost my family that to me requires that that's a separate part to the bible and believing that the god of the bible is the true god but um and and also realizing that the bible is a man-made book that re misrepresents an omnipotent loving god um, but the whole religious, I mean, the whole family trauma is another thing altogether. And I, I don't know how to solve that. My, uh, on my side of the family, uh, I think I had, well, I only had one sister who became a witness, mm -hmm. not because of me. Uh, that was her own own thing and a half sister. Neither of them are witnesses now. But oh, so you don't have any, no, any don't so you don't have any family. family. Yeah, yeah I, on my wife's side, uh, all of them JWs. So she's That's so she's much harder. Hard. I I haven't found it hard at all. the The hard thing was letting go of the fact that to me there is no God in my mind, and it's certainly not the God of the Bible if there is a God. So that mm -hmm. that I only had half the trauma to face. Um, so yeah, I really feel for ones who have lost their immediate families. Um, their children or their their mothers and fathers or their extended family, you know, aunties, brothers, uncles, sisters, cousins, cousins yeah, brothers, sisters. nieces, nephews. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, that's. I never lost any of that, so um, I always had that, and I was yeah. the one pushing non-witness family away by making excuses for not going to get-togethers or not going out somewhere or or not having much to do with them. So, but have you reconnected? Have you reconnected? Oh, we, we always were connected, but not like we should have been as a family. And and the weird thing is, and this is what I've discussed with another one of my friends who's who's basically now an XJW, um, is that the family who weren't witnesses, they welcome back well, they welcome you back with open arms. It's the JWs who close themselves off. The so called right. um we're the most loving organization, the most loving brotherhood. They're the ones that show that they don't love. Whereas they have the most lack of love. love. It's all conditional. Love. It's conditional yes. love, and yes. conditional love is not love. It is. That's right. It isn't. Yes, you're right. <laughs> so yeah, that, that that's the thing. Uh, and yeah, is there yeah, anything else yeah. that you wanted to get across, Ed? Um, I would say I, I, I'd really like to thank all the XJWs like yourself. The ones who put up put themselves out on YouTube and put these channels out. It do, doesn't matter whether they're. Um, so I'm. This is talking from a witness perspective. Whether they're um, good speakers or not good speakers, or whether they can string their words together well, or whether they can't string their words together well, it all adds up. One every little bit adds up, and it gets out to more and more people, mm -hmm. and more and more people, and that's another way of getting that support of, of someone who understands what you're going through, hearing other experiences. Um, it makes I you feel not really so crazy. Helpful. It did yeah, me when yeah. I started hearing that other people actually felt and thought and were going through a lot of the same things that I thought, felt, and was going through. I was mm. like, I made me feel better. Yes. It was, I, you know, you had kind of a camaraderie there you you know you could rule somebody that you can relate to yeah so a, a big thank you to everyone who's who's done these channels and all those who maybe go to the authorities they spend time um i think the biggest name that we all know besides 
well, there's Mark O'Donnell, there's that Barbara Anderson. Barbara Anderson. One, ones like them, the, the original Ray Frames, who actually just get out there and they do something. that They may, you know, originally back in the day, they may not have had much exposure in terms of internet and that sort of thing, but they actually did something. You write a book, um, do an interview, do... Um, go but it's to making an impact now. Them. It's making yeah, an they, impact now. They're mm. They're... They started the ball rolling, you know, that's, that's, I'm so glad you brought all of them out because mm. they are the ones that had to push the ball up the hill. And yes. now that it's up there, there's a whole bunch of us others now able to yeah. push it up with them. But yeah. I mean, they have to, yeah, they're heroes. Yes. And every, every little thing that every XJW does and can put out there now, internet's just made it blow up. So um, every little bit you can do. Every little bit helps. I've seen how many i don't know how many new channels i've seen start up so um it doesn't matter who it is if it's someone new that i haven't seen before i'll click on a video so you know all those yes. clicks and views and that sort yes. of thing it just gets out to more and more people and then and you hear different things too different yes, experiences different, and yeah. different craziness mm. and it's mm. like wow yeah it's just yeah. I love hearing people's experiences. Yes, different perspectives. Yeah, all the perspectives on on how they saw it or what happened to them or um, how these scriptures were misused or what this means or what that means. And, and you get actually get a bigger understanding, I, I think. Right. That whether, whether you still believe in a God or whether you don't, um, you get all these different understandings. And I think if you can get out there and still have an open mind and accept everyone for who they are, and for what they believe, except for, like I said, if they're hurting other people. Um, then as long as they're not hurting other people, then what's wrong mm, with them? Yeah. Well, yeah. That, there's that, nothing wrong with right. them. And there's one one thing I would like to say. I don't know whether you'll put this in there, but um, it's sort of like the Bible even says it, you know, when it came to the Babel, um, you know, and God wanted to confuse the languages because right. he said nothing, you know, together as a people. There's, There's nothing, nothing they cannot they accomplish that they cannot accomplish, and and that that really feeds into something that I it hit me uh, must have been 15, 20 years ago when I went to a um, I'm in IT I went to a um, just a presentation that was being done about a particular software product, but they they had a presentation and they showed uh, they showed technology versus um, money. Um, but but it also knowledge was involved in that, and they just showed. They said when when they were first trying to get man on the moon, um, and, and it was this line. It just went logarithm, and it just went like this. So you had the the moon over here, and it, and it was something like it. I can't remember how many millions or millions of dollars back then it cost to put one man on the moon. But you move forward, and it came down to a million. And money isn't worth as much as it was back then. Right. But also at the same time, you saw this tech. So you had this line, which was technology. And technology was like this. And they said, what happened when the internet came along is that it just went logarithmic. Because now mankind, we weren't all separated. So you yeah. could get on the internet and you could find out research that this company had done, research that company had done, and you could make a, a product that you didn't have to go through all this pain that they had gone through previously. So you could actually do things a lot faster and a lot better. And and the internet's helped us to get connected to do that, for mankind to actually work together, and it's broken down language barriers. So for me, m mankind getting together, forget about what someone believes as long as they're not hurting someone, just work together and we can make make the world a better place and humans a better sort of people by working together. And and actually, here's a, a little little fact. That's what they did in Star Trek. If you're a Star Trek fan, if you notice the humans, um, they've gotten rid of poverty, uh, money mm -hmm. problems, gotten rid of... They all work together. Everything was got, and, and humans actually just worked. And there was a, um, a quote in one of the... I think it was Enterprise. <laughs> I don't know if you're a Star Trek fan. I love Star Trek. But, um, it was about the Vulcans <laughs> um, overseeing or, or being a part of, you know, when humans first went into space with the warp engine. Um, and it was something like humans managed to achieve in, I think it was like a hundred, couple of hundred years, what had taken the Vulcans 1,200 years or something to get to. And so that's what they were worried about with humans, that, that they'd solved their problems 
that the Vulcans have been working on for 1,200 years before the Vulcans started getting into all the, uh, you know, moving forward, that humans were doing it a lot quicker. And you see, even with Star Trek, yeah, yes, it's it's sci-fi. Yeah, I know, but it, I see the I see the comparison. Yeah, yeah. And then I see the comparison like that in the galaxy. They just well, that's rip, what you know, Ed. That's what so. I'm hoping. I'm hoping with all these different channels that mm -hmm. the more voices that are out there, the more people that start waking up. Because mm -hmm. I don't, I, I don't know if you guys had the commercial. It was like if. I tell two friends and they tell two friends and they tell two friends and it just kept growing. I've seen that, and, yeah. and so it's, it, it's like, you know, if the more, the, the more easier the access is to get to these X J W channels, this information, mm. I mean, it's so easy to just Google duck, duck, whatever you do now, mm. Yahoo to look anything up. I'm hoping that the more there's out there, the more that will wake up, the faster. Yeah. I, you know, I, we don't know the numbers. I, if we only knew the numbers of PMOs right now. Mm. Wouldn't that yes. be interesting? Wouldn't that, that would be, be interesting? Yeah. So, yeah. So hopefully, hopefully yeah. they do wake up and um and we live in a better world, or we make mm. the world leave the world a better place. Leave the bit. Yeah. Well, you know, that's hopefully what all we can do is. Just be good people and leave the leave the world a better place for our kids and our grandkids. Yes, all <laughs> the future generations. All the future yeah. generations. Yeah. And I'll I'll go for let's get into space. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping they build something in my lifetime. So I can, <laughs> you want to go I, out? I've always wanted. Well, to go you need to space. become um, friends with Elon Musk. Oh yeah, yeah, but he wants to send you to Mars with no return. Oh, trip, that's so. true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah I, I don't want to do that. Return. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Yeah, well, listen, but... I'm going to take this off. Ooh, um, is there anything else? No, that's so that nice. Thank you, guys. Thank you,